Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the blind spot monitor alert that's equipped on newer Toyota models. Now we're going to talk about two things on this system. First, how it works as a consumer for you when you buy a car with this function, how to use it, how it should work and what you should know about it. We're also going to talk about how it actually works behind the scenes. We're going to follow the theme of this channel on things like this. We're going to keep things simple, but uh, trust me, they are actually super complicated. But before we dig into this subject, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new to it. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. So a small overview on the blind spot monitoring system. Now this system is designed to alert the driver if there is another car in your blind spot. Now every car has a blind spot. It's typically between the B pillar by the rear door all the way to the back the end of the car. It is a spot that when you turn over your shoulder you can't really see if there's a car especially if the car is a sedan or something lower. If you're sitting in an SUV it's even worse and it's kind of a dangerous angle. Everybody knows the blind spot. We all look really good before we uh, make a lane change. So this system helps alert you when there is a car in your blind spot. Now the basic idea of this system operation wise it is pretty simple actually. You turn it on usually either by a button or in the screen and once you do that it uh, turns to little lights on the mirrors and they shut off and then the system is active. Now when there is a car in your left blind spot the indicator light on the mirror will light up telling you that there is a car in your left blind spot and the same thing for the right side. Now another thing of this system when you turn your turn signal and there is a car in your blind spot it's gonna start blinking at you just to let you know hey you know, reminding you, it'll actually beep at you sometimes in some models. So that's the basic operation of this system. It's more really what we're focused on in this video is how it actually works. What's happening behind the scenes? What makes the system work? And some things you need to know about this system if you have a car that's equipped with it. Some precautions if you would. So let's dig right into that. So how does the blind spot monitor actually works? Behind the scenes, if you would. I made a series on Toyota Safety Sense and we talked about the radar sensor in the front of the car. Now, the blind spot monitor works somewhat in a similar way. Right behind the rear bumper on the sides, there are two radar sensors, similar to the one in front of the car. By the way, if you didn't see my video on Toyota Safety Sense, I'll leave the link in the description. I'll also leave it for you right here. Now those two radar sensors, they're very simple millimeter wave radar sensors. They send waves, the waves bounce off, they come back, the sensor receives them and it can know the distance. Now the idea of this sensor is it has an angle, like a viewing angle that it sees. It's looking for objects in this angle. Now a car comes in this angle and it's precisely positioned right at the side of the car so it would see any object within that blind spot. You notice if you drive one of these cars with a blind spot, as soon as the car comes like right by the driver's door, you no longer see, see the light on because now it's no longer in your blind spot. You see it right next to you. So it's also very important that you pay attention when you use the system. Don't rely on it 100%. So these little sensors, they sit behind the bumper. They're highly calibrated to pick up those cars in that blind spot. Now some, some things with this sensor is going to take this information, it's going to process it and it's going to send it to the computer and the computer will decide are we going to turn on the light or no. This computer for the blind spot will communicate with something called the body control ECU or the body computer if you would. The body computer is the big bustle man that does everything in the car related to the body. It's going to tell Hey man, so you can send him a little text or give him a quick phone call. Hey man, there's a car in the blind spot on the left side. Could you turn on that light in the mirror? Sure. Light comes on in the mirror. And then 
hey man, the object, the car is gone in my blind spot, turn it off, turn it off. That's how these computers communicate on these new cars. It is, I'm making it like a little uh, cartoon thing, but it actually does work like that. They communicate on a network, they all talk to each other, they're all friends, and uh, when they're not friends anymore, that's when all the Christmas light comes on and they don't talk to each other anymore. In Toyota's that doesn't happen so often, but it does happen, things do happen. Which takes us into... Problems with this system are something you really need to be aware of. Now, this system for the most part is really trouble free. However, we have had cars come back and back and back for problems with blind spot monitor. The problem with these sensors are they sit right behind the bumper, I mean against the, the bumper cover. They're very close because they need to be perfectly positioned so they can pick up the area of the blind spot. Now, any tiny bump on that bumper, especially on the side of the bumper, and that sensor is no longer aligned and the computer will be able to tell. It's like, wait a minute, I don't like what I'm seeing. It's like the, the cars are not appearing in the angle that I want them to appear in. I mean, it can't be that your car is driving sideways and all of a sudden I feel like the car that's coming, it's coming sideways. Like the wave sensor is gonna start hitting the side of that car and, and all of a sudden the distance is getting further, but then it's getting closer. And it's like something doesn't make sense. And that's when the computer detects, okay, there's a problem with my sensor. We're gonna shut everything down and we're gonna turn on the Christmas tree. That's, that's how the system works. It's a very smart system, but it's also very sensitive. So very common in the city of Chicago, where I'm from, is uh, people are uh, not very considerate of other people's cars. You know, when they park on the street, they just uh, use the car in front of you and the, behind you as a bump stop, if you would, so uh, you can parallel park that way. It's just a Chicago thing, and I'm pretty sure other big cities as well. So when these bumpers get hit, it's, it's so easy to bend the bracket for that sensor. I mean, it's just a little bracket. It's not a structural item. You just, you can bend it with your hand, actually. It's something we do when we service these systems. Now, any bend to this bracket, the calibration is off, and the calibration does have a certain limitation. And I'll talk about the calibration in a little bit. It does have limitations, but if you bend that bracket further, or worse, damage the sensor, and the sensor has plastic face, if it cracks, water gets in it, and that's the end of that. So it is very important that you're well aware that if you have this system, any hit on the rear bumper, especially the corners or the sides, the, the very side of the car, will potentially damage the system. This is very important for you to know because, man, if your car gets in an accident and the insurance is paying for this, you really want them to finish the job and fix it right and fix those sensors. I cannot emphasize how important it is that if your car has a system and you get an accident that a good body shop fixes this car because if they don't, I've seen scary stuff. I've seen zip ties on the sensor. I've seen brackets not fixed right and they're just thrown in or the car looks beautiful on the outside. You take the bumper and the sensor is like twisted upside down. Body shops are great people, they're, they're our brothers, they're mechanics brothers. They work just like us, they're hardworking, but just like they are hardworking and just like mechanics are hardworking, there's also bad body shops and bad mechanics. So it is essential that you don't cut corners with this system. It is essential that when your car gets in an accident, you get it fixed right by a good body shop. I have seen body shops that do work of art with these systems. I mean, they bring them back exactly how they were from the factory. It has to be super precise and it has to be exact. There's no randomness here, it has to be exact. So let's talk about the calibration process. So every time this sensor is removed from the car or there's an accident or there's any kind of work on the sensor, it needs to be calibrated. And what we're doing with the calibration here is, is we're basically telling the sensor um, this exact point measured to the millimeter, very accurate point, at this exact angle from the body of the car is a preset amount. So we're going to measure the ground, we're going to put a little the reflector if you would, and we're going to tell the sensor, do you see that reflector there buddy? Yes? Okay, well that is 
let's say six feet from the car and I don't know, three, three degrees off the center of the car or whatever the case may be, every car will have a different specification for it. But when you tell the sensor that, the sensor will send its waves, bring them back, and it's like, it's gonna send its waves, start a timer, when the waves bounce back, it's gonna look at that time and it's gonna know how far is that object. When you calibrate it by telling it this time that it took for this wave to go back and forth is six feet, for example, then the sensor will know, okay, now I have my zero point, if you would, and now I know what I'm looking at. Now the computer knows how to process the data coming off that sensor. But if everything is upside down and bent and not right, it's gonna try to use the system, but eventually it's gonna set trouble calls. Now we have Christmas trees on and things are not working because when calibrating this system, we've also, we can also make very minor adjustments. We basically hold the bracket for the sensor and kind of bend it this way, bend it this way, but that only makes very minor changes. If there's a significant amount of just twist in that bracket that holds the sensor, there's no fixing that. That bracket either needs to be fixed, the body behind it needs to be corrected. These systems are very touchy and very sensitive to the most minor, you would not believe. Sometimes I have to beg people to come with me under the shop lights where everything is clear and show them, look, there's a tiny little imprint on the bumper. He goes like, yeah, well, that's the imprint of the sensor. That means something hit the car, hit the bumper cover, hit, hit the sensor and bend the bracket, then the bumper cover popped back and you don't even know, but the sensor is bent. We, in many minor accidents, sometimes, we are able to fix that bracket back, slide, bend it slightly, keep measuring back and forth until we get it right. But in most cases, that's not possible. So it's very important that these systems are fixed right. Now, the coolest thing about this system is, which will lead us to the, another video I will make about this, when they put these sensors initially in the cars, you know, it's a great system, it worked, but because Toyota engineers don't just design something and then forget about it, move on to the next greatest things, that's why they make great cars. They will take what they already have and they try to perfect it and make a lot more use out of it. So they figure, wait a minute, we have, the blind spot sensors, the radar sensors, there, there's one on the right side, there's one on the left side, it's already there, it's already in the cars, so what can we possibly do more with it? And then they decided to come up with rear cross traffic alert and all kinds of safety systems in the rear of the car, which we will talk about in a subsequent video, which will discuss parking assist and all the other functions that are related to these two blind spot modern system. Until then, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you now know how this system kind of works in a way, how it works behind the scenes and how you operate it. It's a very simple operation. You really set it and forget it, but you know how it works behind the scenes. And most importantly, you know what happens when, you, when the car is even in the most minor accident. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next part, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day.